Thank you for, for being here and staying on such a, a beautiful day, and thank you for that nice introduction. Um, I'm kind of glad you did mention the figure skating, uh, because it's not every, every day that I get to show a figure skating joke, but basically it says, this isn't what I expected when I bought the tickets, uh, Disney on Ice. <laughs> So, so why study gender? So I will be defining terms in just a minute, but basically, um, f you know, for those of us who have, uh, you know, as pediatricians, um, have dealt uh, in the newborn nursery with, oh, I can see my slides right in front of me here. I don't have to look that way. Um, uh, patients with disorders of sex development. This is the, the current term for ambiguous genitalia or intersex. And of course, one of the most daunting responsibilities of the pediatrician or the pediatric endocrine specialist is to assign whether the, the family should raise this, this infant as a male or female. And so often, it's impossible to really predict, even with the most common forms of ambiguous genitalia, what the gender outcome is likely to be. And I just listed some particular types there. And the third one that I listed there, which is congenital adrenal hyperplasia, is the most common form of, of DSDs affecting genetic females. But even in that situation, uh, it's very difficult uh, with certainty to predict the gender. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. The second reason is that there's an increase number, increasing number of, of uh, patients, of young people over the last uh, uh, several years that have approached our clinic and, and perhaps your services. And I, you know, within five minutes of my being here, I ran into two pediatric colleagues here who have referred patients already into the gender program. So more and more people are presenting and often the pediatrician is really the first uh, medical person point of contact who really uh, needs to be aware of this issue and to have a sense of you know, when uh, an appropriate referral needs to be made. But there's an increasing number of kids that are identifying themselves as transgender who want to block their own puberty and to uh, consider uh, receiving the sex hormones of the other gender. And so, you know, what is all this? And I remember when I first got this, or when I got the first request for this, which was just about five years ago, I was like, I had no idea what they were talking about. So I have had a lot to learn myself in the last uh, five years. So let's just define some terms. So, um, well, it's always fun to define sex, but in this, the context of this talk, sex is defined as the physical attributes that characterize biologic maleness or femaleness. And of course, in a young person, we're talking about the genitalia. In contrast, gender or gender identity in particular, uh, when we say that, we're talking about a person's fundamental inner sense of who they are as, as male or female. And this is not always binary. Um, now, speaking of sex, many of us in the Bay Area have certainly been so focused on issues such as same-sex marriage that we may have failed to recognize the emergence of a parallel and equally pressing problem affecting uh, more mainstream America. It says, I'm drafting a bill that supports some sex marriage. <laughs> okay. I promise my whole talk isn't, isn't uh, cartoons. But... <laughs> But it is Saturday afternoon. Okay, this 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 uh, this cartoon though actually uh, uh, it says you see a, you see someone approaching someone pushing a baby carriage saying is it a boy or girl and the person responds and says I don't know it can't talk yet so that is really the thing that really capsulizes the whole concept of gender sex you can see uh, you know in the nursery you can see what's you know, what's there and you know, most of the time you see what look like normal male or female genitalia occasionally it's not clear. But but gender is something that's between your ears and not something you have to wait for someone to reach a certain developmental stage to have their own uh, degree of self-awareness and then uh, disclose it. And there's a difference between gender identity and gender behavior or gender expression. Right? What, and, and I guess, well, that, that will be obvious. So how do we diagnose transgender? So up until the spring of this year, the American Psychiatric Association referred to this condition as GID, or Gender Identity Disorder. And it was listed that way in their DSM, which, um, as you probably know, stands for, I believe it's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So it still lives there. Um, and the current term, however, uh, is now gender dysphoria uh, in children, okay? And so it's the focus now is not so much on the gender identity, but more on the, the anxiety and the discomfort that a person experiences uh, feeling that they are not fitting in, uh, basically that there's a, a incongruence between how they feel about themselves and what their body is telling the world.